the water just goes round and round and round and round and round and the fish seem to love it. You can see why it's a wood shrimp, can't you, look? Some of this will be perfect to take. Again, we don't want to make too much of an impact. Let's get back to the studio. Oh, ow, 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 ow. Gorgeous bit of moss. That's like a real stunning piece, isn't it? Guys, I literally cannot believe how nice this has turned out. Like, it's even better than I expected. So the saga continues guys, we've now built the hardscape framework, the filtration, the waterfall, the decorative sand, all of that is in as you can see. The water's almost clear, I've added in this little filter you can see down the bottom here, that's just clearing it, that's not staying there, that'll come out. What we need to add now is all the decoration, the mosses, the sticks, all the stuff that really makes it come to life and just give it that look of a little slice of nature that we're going for. So I fiddled around with the water flow a little bit guys and you see we've ended up with something like that. What I like about that is it's spreading the water evenly over that one piece of rock there which means that as we add the mosses into sort of like here and here it'll actually push the water into the middle but also the moss will act as a wick so that we can just get it everywhere i want it green just green like look at how cool this looks like oh We've got a few mozzies back. I've just had a door open all day, so that's probably why. That's fine. So as many of you know, we set up Timmy's Aquarium about three weeks ago now. Now, when I set it up, I deliberately made it really simple because I know how dirty turtles can be. I mean, I kept them for a long time. It's no secret. But we're at that phase in the tank when the diatoms are kicking in, that light up there is causing like cyanobacteria. It's just really like grotty it's really really intense so the beauty of what i've done here is that i can just take it all out clean it and put it back in again a bit difficult to do that in a normal aquarium but with a shallow tank with not much water like this we can just do it in no time yeah so here's what i'm talking about look there's timmy <laughs> hello mate he knows me now he's not scared of me at all look hello <laughs> he's all good so yeah, we've got some grotty sand, we've got a bit of cyano on the glass, the water level's dropped, bubbling stuff and things and grossness. Let's get all that clean. But first of all, I'm gonna feed Timmy so that then I can clean any waste that's left after him and just suck it out of the tank. So what I like to do to feed Timmy is I take his little egg cup. Ah, his little Thomas egg cup. <laughs> and this is his bloodworm cup. I then fill the cup with hot water. Nah, 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 nah. And then it's just a simple case of sticking a bloodworm in the water. Well, not a bloodworm, you know what I mean, a whole cube. <laughs> There's a cube. In you go. Let that defrost for a little bit and then it will just sit at the bottom of the sand and Timmy can eat it. Okay, so Timmy's food is now defrosted. I can pick it up. There we go. With the tweezers and I'll just put it in for him here and he'll see it. Look, I'll just push it in that sand and let go. There we go. Look, straight away. Go on, Timmy. Feast yourself. Um, good boy. Right, and I'll just leave him to that. I don't want to stick this camera in his face like this for too long. I want to make sure he eats the majority of that because he will. Because he a pig. You a pig, Timmy. I am growing man. If I am going to take over this country, I must eat all of my red meat. But I don't want this horrible green stuff, so please get out of tank. And then what I like to do is just take this and pour out that juice. We can put in the Rainbow River. Go. I don't know why I'm making music sound effects when I have a whole library of music I could use. These guys love it. Look at that. How cool is this tank, guys? If you're new to the channel and you've not seen it, this is my Rainbow River. The water just goes round and round and round and round and round and the fish seem to love it. I love it. It looks great. Still haven't seen the vampire shrimp, guys. <laughs> Still hiding in this cave. I did shine a light right inside there and I did see him when I did that, but I haven't seen him come out yet. Maybe he never will come out. So what I like to do to make sure that the shrimp get food as well, because a lot of people are asking about powdered food, what I do is I've got these micro granules here which I can't open one-handed, there we go. And I just take a pinch, so I've got like it between my fingers. And what I do then is literally just really forcefully put it between my fingers like that and it makes it all go into like a mush. And then under the water, look, I can do this. There we go, look, see all that powderiness coming out, that powdery goodness. So that's, there you go, look, you can just see that's all going in the water column. And I know that works because for instance, ah, there is our wooden friend. Right on cue, he's fanning, so there's obviously particles in the water that he's enjoying to take. How much does he look? You can see why it's a wood shrimp, can't you, look? Look at him. I don't know how I even spotted him, to be fair. Up close you can see, but like from a distance here, it just looks like a piece of that wood, doesn't it? It's amazing. Nature at its finest.
so that's Timmy's tank looking squeaky clean. Let's get back to the new paradarium. So as you can see behind me, the tank is now looking sweet. We've got that really nice raised waterfall area now. But what I now want to do is go to my friend's forest. Well, it's not a forest, it's a wood at the side of his house. But he's got loads of really nice moss that I want to go and collect from there. Just to really deck out this area that we've created, this platform at the top. It's going to look so good, just completely covered, nice and green, filling in all the gaps, apart from the main waterfall area. So let's go and get that now. So I'm at the wooded area that's behind my friend's house now. Be aware, I don't know what the laws are in your state or country, but in the UK, you can only take plants, mosses, that sort of thing from locations that are privately owned. So, you know, this area belongs to my friends. He's given me permission. So just be aware of stuff like that. And also we need to be responsible as well. Like don't take more than you need. Try to not make too much damage or impact on that area. So for instance here, look, we've got some really nice moss on this part of the tree. Now it quite easily pulls away, which is perfect because it means that it doesn't have loads of dirt or anything that's going to pollute our water underneath. It means it will just sit nicely on top of our rocks and just go more and more green, which is perfect. So some of this will be perfect to take. Again, we don't want to make too much of an impact, so don't take more than you need. Another thing as well as mosses that we can use that's really good, sticks like this one. Like they've got loads of little details and stuff. They're all dead, so they've fallen down, not a problem. It's the sort of thing that really is gonna add character to our paludarium. Okay, so we've managed to get a really good hoard, or haul. We, we've got some stuff, but <laughs> let's get back to the studio. Oh, ow, 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 ow. Tripping over all these vines. <laughs> let's get back to, ow! This is killing me. Let's get back to the studio and put this in the tank. We are back in the studio, guys. I've got my bucket of tricks down here. We've got loads of really nice pieces in there. We've got like sticks, dead twigs, moss. We've got loads of really cool bits just to make this look really authentic. But I've had another thought or a potential idea for the lid. So part of me doesn't want to just make something that's going to impact the light and the visual look. So I'm thinking about maybe doing something like I did with Mike's tank. So on Mike's tank, look, I placed a lid out of an old tank that I just took this glass from, cut it into two pieces and we have a lid. Voila. And then this suction piece here is the bit that you can use to slide it on and off. And it works really well. I have another spare tank. And it's this filthy looking thing in my old studio. This is the one that was the Fallen Tree Aquascape. Well, yeah, it's just thin glass, but you know, it could work really well in two halves. It's like, like what you saw there on, on Mike's tank. I think that could work really well. And it might be a little bit better than the netting option. Obviously we'll leave small gaps for ventilation, but at the end of the day, newts like high humidity, so does moss could be a winner there. I think what I'm going to do is get this split apart. Obviously, you have to take off all the silicon and the seams, run a blade down it, being really careful, separate all the panels, and then we've got some glass to work with. But before we do any of that, I think it's time we actually got scaping in this tank and start making that top area look awesome. Right, so I'm just going to jump straight in, get out some of the top stuff, get out those sticks. Gorgeous bit of moss. That's like a real stunning piece, isn't it? And on the bottom there, there's minimal amounts of like loose organic matter. There's a little bit, but the moss does need a little bit. So what we want to do, take a piece like that, for instance, and I think a good spot for that, it's just going to be at the side here because that'll actually act as a wick. I'll move it around actually like that. That'll act as a wick now and actually transport that water down this way. And I can actually feel it coming through already. Now, because of that small amount of organic water, we're not going to be ready for any aquatic life until we've thoroughly tested to make sure that we've got good parameters of our water. But we should be fine. Once that washes through a little bit, we can keep removing the filter that we're going to place in there as well, cleaning that out and putting back in. And obviously I've got full testing kits to be able to test the nitrate levels, nitrite levels. Now I'm just going to keep adding stuff in like that until we've got a nice coverage. Oh, come on, come on, how sick does that look? Like, I'm really happy with how that's all turned out. I think that's looking really authentic already. If you go to like a moorland or something like that, that's what you sort of see on all the rocks. It's just, just pretty much moss like that. But I think we want to have a bit more detail than that. So I've got an assortment of sticks as well, the broken ones that I found on the floor, got a little bit of moss on them. 
some old ones like this that are fully dry and completely sort of crusty with all nice little textures and then some as well like this that are completely get off get off some like this that are completely bare and i think they'll look really good in the water but are also old and dead so they shouldn't shouldn't degrade if you like well, they, well all organic stuff will degrade but you know at a slower rate so let's get some of these into the tank just a quick note guys if you do want to have access to my behind the scenes club where i ask you guys for direct feedback as i'm building all these aquariums then click the join button below it's the best way you can support the channel as well to ensure that i can keep making all these videos Guys, I literally cannot believe how nice this has turned out. Like, it's even better than I expected. I didn't expect it to be as amazing and as sort of punchy and impactful as it is. So hopefully you can see there that I've tried to place the wood in, in a way that sort of flows in this direction and then continues into the water as well. I personally think that it looks really sort of authentic, real. Um, that's because it is real. <laughs> Lots of you are taking the mick out of me in the last video and saying, oh, this natural nature looks natural. <laughs> yeah, sorry, yeah. Sometimes I say stupid things. I'm only human. <laughs> so yeah, let's take a closer look at what we've got. So the, the sticks, the main sticks are coming that way, that way, and that way. So it's a triangular composition, which carries on with the feel that we already had with the hardscape, well, the rock hardscape anyway. And that sort of continues into the water as well, which is looking awesome, isn't it? I don't think this needs much greenery underwater at all. I think we've got so much up above that it looks quite good. What do you think? Should I add some sort of, you know, aquatic plants this as well? I've got an order coming from Tropica soon, so I'll have a load of good Anubias and mosses and things like that that I can add in. What do you think? I, I think it looks good as it is, but it's hard to say. I might just add it in anyway and just we can all have a look and see how it looks. And if it doesn't look as good, then take it out. But so far, I think we're on to a winner. And the good thing is all of this moss is moist because obviously it, it transfers from one bit to the other. And as I said before, it acts as a wick. So this sort of sucks up the water here and then it just sort of travels down. You can see that that bit of wood is wet. There's moisture in this moss as well. If I lift it up, look, you can see that it's all moist under there. It's not soaking wet. We don't want it soaking wet. We just want it moist. So that's perfect. And do you know what, guys? I'm really actually liking how the paladarums are looking and they're becoming my new favorite kind of tank. I mean, I've always loved them. From the moment I first saw them on YouTube, I loved them. But you know, now that we've got free going on in the studio, it's really making me want to do more. I'm thinking about doing like a nano version again. I have done one before, but I'm much better at being able to do it now. I think that might be quite cool to do. Behind me in this corner, is going to be a full on sort of fish tank corner, if you like. So we've got our fish tank sorted. We've got obviously Mike down here as well. And then we've got over this side, we've got you know, the Ranchu crew looking sweet. And we've also got our dirted aquarium as well, which has got some plants next to it in here that I'm going to get ready to plant in the bowl. Yes, yeah, so we've got some nice Eleocaris there, dwarf hair grass. We've got Glossostigma, a few other bits and bobs in there. To be fair, quite a lot of bits and bobs in there, but that's good. That's good. That's what we need. They're all grown in the aquasaur tank. And seeing as they're established plants, they're going to go really well in that new bowl aquarium. So let me know what you're thinking, guys. I want to actually change this one into a small sort of nano paladarium, if you think. Maybe for the crabs, like everyone was suggesting, or the mud skippers might work really well in here. I mean, this tank's had its day. It's got some serious algae problems. I can't put shrimp in there because the cave fish are vicious. They they just eat anything. I mean, they even try and kill the auto sinkless, but the autos stay so still that they don't see them. But let me know. Do you think that's a good idea? Change this one to something like either a crab or a mud skipper. Let's vote crabs or mud skippers, vampire crabs. I think they're dwarf mud skippers, aren't they? Yeah, just, just, yeah, tell me what you think. So anyway, guys, the tank is looking sweet. The thing we need to do next is add the glass top, possibly some ferns, and obviously we need to get our newts as well.
my brother.